In a prospective era, economic strife persists, leaving a mere 20% of citizens employed while the majority languish in poverty. The government responds by erecting a city-dividing wall, confining the jobless to an area named the Zone Beyond It, safeguarded by vigilant guards. Three decades later, the Zone grapples with untreated diseases and scarce drinkable water. Noah, navigating the zone, encounters a girl with clean water, leading to a confrontation with his mother, Ezia. An official announcement pledges jobs for all, but skepticism reigns in the zone. Simultaneously, in the city, Reuben and Thais prepare for work at Aquaville, the lone water company. Their daughter, Mael, faces scrutiny for a dress code violation due to her muta condition. Amidst the turmoil, the minister of Labor Monroe, recently released from rebel captivity, visits the zone with Prime Minister Nadia. A dubious Solidarity Job program is proposed, promising jobs for zoners in exchange for Monroe's release. The actives fear the integration of the poor into their society. As Monroe returns home, his compromised health is concealed from the public. Monroe's daughter Zoe urges caution due to his fragile state. Meanwhile, Noah attends class with Mr. Robinson, who teaches about the origins of the oppressive system. Robinson advocates against a life dictated by work. Noah, influenced by his lottery-winning father, disagrees. In the zone, individuals are interviewed for the job program, facing scrutiny for signs of illness. Ezia secures a spot through deception, obtaining a mandatory code tattoo on her wrist. At Aquaville, Thais contemplates stealing vital data with her accomplice, Hans, to secure a better life. Thais' mistakes at work heighten her anxiety about ending up in the zone. Head of security Jean interrogates Monroe about his captivity, while Nadia prioritizes propaganda to maintain stability. Reuben desires a promotion to send Mael to Phoenix Academy, but Thais doubts Silas will assist. A confrontation ensues, and Reuben confides in Mael. In the zone, Jeff's selection for the program strains his relationship with Lisbeth. Reuben seeks assistance from Silas, unaware of his father's deteriorating health. Thais and Hans conspire to steal data from Silas's office, aiming to sell it to rebels. Thais fears exposure after a guard interrupts them. Simultaneously, Monroe returns to work emphasizing loyalty to the government in a propagandist speech. Reuben and Thais clash over career ambitions, revealing a plan to steal Aquaville's data. Jeff, serving as a propaganda face, endures restrictions, but manages a small theft. Guards escort zoners into the city for work, Ezia assigned to Reuben's house. Mael's reluctance to part with her doll unsettles Ezia. During the cleanup, Ezia faces prejudice from the actives. Jeff becomes a government propaganda figurehead, making televised statements. In Aquaville, Thais struggles to access Silas's computer amidst investigations into Hans. The evolving intrigue sets the stage for clandestine actions and escalating tensions. As Reuben steps into his home, an eerie silence greets him with Thais conspicuously absent and unresponsive to his persistent calls. Fueled by a desperate need to present an impeccable image at the upcoming party, Reuben, grappling with the absence of his wife, proposes an audacious plan. In a bold move, he suggests that Isia, who bears an uncanny resemblance to Thais, takes on the role of her substitute for the night. Driven by the fear of potential job loss, Isia, in a hesitant acceptance, agrees to partake in this peculiar charade. She finds herself draped in Thais's clothes, a mere imitation of her life, concealing her zoner status with the strategic placement of a bracelet bearing a facade of normalcy. In the opulent confines of Nadia's residence, a revelation unfolds. The actives, including Nadia's own family, harbor deep-seated prejudices against zoners. A prevailing sentiment surfaces, casting zoners as a perceived threat stealing coveted jobs. The backdrop of this social unrest is painted with an unsettling reality. There have been 22 recorded cases of aggression directed towards zoners. 
However, in the face of this discord, Nadia, the prime minister, maintains a stoic resolve, urging adaptation for the sake of salvaging public relations. The grandeur of the party venue becomes a stage where Isia, thrust into an unfamiliar role, grapples with overwhelming nerves. Her dance with Reuben, a facade of merriment, becomes too much to bear, and she retreats down the corridor, yearning for a momentary escape from the charade. In this moment of solitude, she stumbles upon a disheartening scene. The other children cruelly taunting Mael, Reuben's mute daughter, for her perceived disability. This revelation triggers a visceral reaction in Isia, prompting a scream of anguish that reverberates through the corridor. The sudden appearance of Silas, Reuben's father, and a figure of authority adds another layer to the unfolding drama, providing an unexpected twist to the narrative. As the family confronts the repercussions of Isia's impromptu departure from the party, Silas reveals his knowledge of Thais's replacement and chastises Reuben for the perceived weakness in his family. The active's disdain for zoners intensifies, fueled by the growing animosity towards this marginalized group. Yet, amidst this tumultuous backdrop, a thread of empathy emerges as Silas decides to confront the family's challenges head-on. The complexities of societal prejudice, family dynamics, and personal sacrifices interweave, creating a narrative tapestry that explores the intricacies of human relationships in a dystopian world. The narrative shifts to the zone, where the zoners, including Jeff, the lottery winner, navigate the aftermath of their newfound opportunities. Lisbeth, expressing her gratitude to Jeff for the stolen perfume, initiates a sequence of events that further highlights the tensions between the actives and zoners. Isia, sharing her earnings with Noah, her son, offers a glimpse into the resilience of familial bonds amidst societal strife. The consequences of Tai's failed mission, her encounter with Jean, and subsequent transfer to the zone add layers of intrigue and suspense to the unfolding drama. Thais, now entangled in the machinations of rebels, faces a harsh reality as she grapples with the consequences of her actions. The narrative takes a darker turn as Thais, subjected to mistreatment and poisoned water, confronts a life-or-death choice. In the corridors of Aquaville, Isia's encounter with Bartholome unfolds into a compromising situation, setting the stage for a pivotal moment that could alter the course of her destiny. The complexity of the narrative deepens as Reuben, driven by familial obligations and aspirations, competes for a director position. Isia, despite her initial hesitation, finds her rhythm at the office, navigating the intricate web of corporate politics. The lunchtime gossip about company deaths serves as a stark reminder of the harsh realities of the world they inhabit. In a parallel narrative, Jeff, now elevated to the position of Monroe's special advisor, grapples with the delicate balance between political propaganda and the concealed mental health struggles of those in power. The fragility of this balance is exposed during a tense dinner scene, where Nadia's authority clashes with Zoe's concern for her father's well-being. In the zone, Noah's discovery of Isia's deception about his father's abandonment sets the stage for a confrontation with Vali. Noah's attempt to cope with the illegal substance, Siddiscott leads to an unexpected outcome, adding another layer of complexity to his character arc. Meanwhile, in the rebels' hideout, Han's motivations and alliances become clearer as he interacts with Thais revealing a broader agenda that transcends personal gain. The narrative takes a thrilling turn as Isia, caught in the crossfire of corporate intrigue and rebel machinations, faces the consequences of her actions. The delicate dance of power dynamics, personal aspirations, and familial bonds unfolds against the backdrop of a city on the brink of upheaval. As the characters navigate the intricacies of their intertwined destinies, the narrative introduces new layers of suspense and tension, 
Reuben's urgent visit to check on Silas exposes the harsh reality of familial relationships driven by hidden motives. The revelation of Silas's illness becomes a poignant moment that reshapes the dynamics between father and son. The next morning unfolds with a revelation of Monroe's reliance on medication to maintain function Liddy. The delicate balance of power and deception within the political landscape is exposed, setting the stage for future conflicts. Over breakfast, Nadia reveals a troubling truth to Monroe, adding a layer of complexity to their relationship. In the rebels' hideout, Isia reluctantly agrees to aid in a plot against Silas, driven by a desire to recover stolen money. The introduction of a chip, intended for insertion into Silas's computer, adds an element of technological intrigue to the narrative. The rebels' motivations and their alliance with Ezea create a web of alliances and betrayals that heightens the narrative tension. Thais's fate takes a dark turn at the hands of Hans, revealing the harsh consequences of rebellion and resistance. The rebels' internal dynamics and their willingness to sacrifice their own for the cause add a layer of moral ambiguity to the narrative. The narrative navigates a complex landscape where individual choices have far-reaching consequences, blurring the lines between right and wrong. As Ezia encounters Bartholome at Aquaville, a compromising situation unfolds, placing her at the mercy of corporate power dynamics. The subtle nuances of gender dynamics and exploitation within the workplace add depth to Isia's character arc. Simultaneously, Jeff, tasked with managing Zoner's behavior, faces backlash and a disappearance, further highlighting the societal divisions that pervade the city. In the zone, Noah and Valley's attempt to infiltrate the city takes a dramatic turn as they face police intervention. The subsequent events unfold in a chaotic sequence, revealing the inherent dangers of navigating a city divided along socioeconomic lines. The characters grapple with the consequences of their choices, setting the stage for further exploration of rebellion and resistance. The narrative shifts back to Reuben, Ezia, and Noah as their paths intersect at a tense checkpoint encounter with guards. The complex dynamics of their relationships come to the forefront as they navigate the challenges of a city on the brink of upheaval. Noah's accusation against Isia prompts a revelation of family struggles, adding an emotional depth to the characters' interactions. Reuben's apology and his decision to drive Isia and Noah to the wall unveil a layer of empathy within his character, challenging preconceived notions about actives and zoners. The journey becomes a metaphorical and physical exploration of the walls that divide the city and the complexities that lie beneath the surface. As the trio faces scrutiny at the checkpoint, the narrative delves into the societal prejudices that permeate the city. Reuben's acknowledgement of Isaiah's struggles and his willingness to defy societal norms hint at the potential for change within this dystopian world. The characters find themselves at a crossroads, questioning the systems that govern their lives and the possibility of forging new alliances. Returning home, Noah's accusation against Isia unravels a web of family secrets and strained relationships. The revelation of Boris as Noah's father adds a layer of complexity to the characters' interconnected destinies. The characters grapple with their own truths and deceptions, paving the way for a narrative that transcends conventional dystopian tropes. The next day unfolds with Monroe's unauthorized TV appearance, a moment that sends shockwaves through the city. The ominous prediction of an inevitable invasion creates a sense of impending doom, setting the stage for the next phase of the narrative. The characters find themselves entangled in a web of political intrigue, familial struggles, and the looming specter of a city on the brink of chaos. In this intricate tapestry of storytelling, the narrative weaves together the threads of individual destinies, societal divisions, and political machinations. Each character becomes a crucial player in the unfolding drama. 
navigating a dystopian landscape where the boundaries between right and wrong blur, and alliances are forged and broken with each passing revelation. The stage is set for a riveting continuation, promising further exploration of the human condition in the face of adversity and the transformative power of choice in a world governed by oppressive systems. The intricate tale unfolds with Hans, receiving a call from Jean, prompting urgent action against the repercussions of Monroe's speech on the program. Hans, revealed as the enigmatic Sewell, consults with Robinson to strategize an impending invasion, realizing the need for critical intel from Isia. Simultaneously, Monroe is confined to psychological evaluation under 24-7 surveillance while Nadia grapples with the aftermath of Monroe's inflammatory speech, triggering chaos in the city. Faced with the escalating crisis, Nadia seeks advice from her father, Passeron, a former prime minister responsible for the construction of the wall, now pondering the unintended consequences of his past decisions. Nadia, learning of the societal turmoil unleashed by Monroe's speech, confronts a city in disarray. Zoe, Nadia's daughter, becomes a conduit for the unfolding chaos, revealing the dire consequences of Monroe's rhetoric. In response, Nadia devises a strategy to salvage the situation, urging citizens not to act impulsively against zoners and declaring severe consequences for those who do. In the shadow of political unrest, Reuben navigates corporate intrigue, encountering Moy, a rival, who proposes an unexpected alliance. However, Moy's discovery of Ezia's zoner mark adds a layer of vulnerability to the situation. The lunchtime encounter propels Reuben into a violent confrontation with Moy, leading to a shocking turn of events. As Reuben grapples with the aftermath of his actions, Ezia becomes entangled in the spiraling tensions within Aquaville. The impending threat to Male's doll becomes a focal point, with Reuben's race against time to protect his daughter from the special team's scrutiny. The narrative explores the complexities of family dynamics, corporate rivalry, and the precarious balance of power within the dystopian society. Against the backdrop of Reuben's turmoil, Jeff takes on a new role as Munro's special advisor, tasked with diffusing tension in the city. However, the city's response to zoners playing soccer serves as a harsh reminder of the deep-rooted prejudices. Jeff's attempt to bridge the gap between the actives and zoners unravels in a tense encounter, highlighting the fragile state of societal relations. In the zone, Noah's discovery of Ezia's deception about his father sets the stage for a confrontation with Valley. The rebel hideout becomes a focal point for revealing Han's motives and alliances, painting a complex portrait of resistance against an oppressive regime. As the narrative unfolds, Ezia becomes a reluctant pawn in the rebel's plot, adding layers of moral ambiguity to her character arc. The corporate world continues to churn with Reuben's pursuit of a director position, navigating the intricate dynamics of office politics. The lunchtime gossip about company deaths serves as a grim backdrop, emphasizing the high stakes within the cutthroat corporate environment. Meanwhile, Jeff's involvement with Nadia's family exposes the hidden struggles behind the facade of political power. The intricate web of relationships and power dynamics escalates as Ezia faces the consequences of her actions. Silas's discovery of Taya's replacement sets off a chain of events that further entangles Reuben and Ezia in the ever-expanding web of corporate and rebel machinations. The complexities of loyalty, betrayal, and personal sacrifices shape the narrative landscape. As the city grapples with political tension, the rebels' agenda takes center stage. Thais's fate becomes a symbol of the harsh consequences faced by those entangled in the struggle against an oppressive regime. The rebels' actions and alliances reveal the intricate chessboard of power dynamics, where individual choices reverberate through the larger narrative. The narrative intensifies with Ezia's capture by Silas setting the stage for a high-stakes confrontation.
the rebels' efforts to expose the truth about Aquaville's water pollution add a layer of urgency to the unfolding drama. The moral ambiguity surrounding characters like Silas and the rebels challenges traditional notions of right and wrong, fostering a narrative rich in complexity. The revelation of Monroe's mental health struggles and Nadia's attempt to manage the precarious political landscape add depth to the overarching storyline. Jeff's involvement in Nadia's family dynamics becomes increasingly fraught, highlighting the personal toll of political maneuvering. The city becomes a powder keg, awaiting the spark that will ignite the long-simmering tensions. As the narrative weaves through the intricacies of political power, societal unrest, and personal struggles, the characters find themselves at a crossroads. Easia's capture becomes a focal point for the rebels' agenda. Ruben's ascent in the corporate world comes with unforeseen consequences, and Jeff grapples with the fragile balance between personal convictions and political alliances. The characters' destinies intertwine in unexpected ways, blurring the lines between protagonist and antagonist. The narrative tension builds as the city teeters on the brink of upheaval, with the rebels making their move and the characters facing the consequences of their choices. Against the backdrop of a dystopian society, the human elements of fear, desperation, and resilience shine through creating a compelling and immersive narrative experience.